What's up everybody, it's Dr. Daniel Ricciardi. In this video today, I'm gonna to be focusing on five of the most common mistakes I hear in people treating themselves for small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. Let's go. Mistake number one is not making sure you have your detox systems working well before starting the SIBO protocol. When I say detox systems, I mean four things. One is breathing, which you're alive, so you're already doing. Second, peeing, we want pale yellow to clear urine. Three, want at least one fully formed bowel movement daily. And four is sweating, which you can get from either exercise or sauna. These detox pathways are critical because that's how we eliminate toxins from our body. If toxins aren't being eliminated during the SIBO protocol, they kind of get rebundled up, sent back into the body where they're gonna cause a lot more side effects and symptoms such as more bloating, nausea, headaches, irritability. I like to think of the sink analogy when thinking about clearing toxins. If you have a clogged sink, are you gonna be continuously running water or are you gonna start running the water before you clear the clog out of the sink? Obviously not, because you're gonna have a major mess to clean up. This ties in the same way with SIBO and toxins. So if you are not committed to getting these pathways cleared, such as having a lot of constipation where you only go to the bathroom once every four days, do not start this protocol, do not start any SIBO protocol before you get these four things in line. Mistake number two is not addressing biofilm. So imagine there's a famous singer performing on stage. Although there may be thousands of fans surrounding everywhere around her, if her bodyguards are there in security, none of these fans are gonna get anywhere near here. So in this metaphor, uh, bodyguards are to biofilm as a singer is to the actual single bacteria. What is a biofilm? It is a protein carbohydrate structure that the bacteria, they kind of form around themselves for protection. And with this biofilm there, the bacteria are actually 100 to 1,000 times more resistant to antibiotics and antimicrobials than just a free-floating bacteria on its own. So if you've kind of already tried to treat your SIBO and been unsuccessful, uh, trying to address biofilm is something that could be incredibly important to you. Uh, again, the longer that you have the SIBO or the symptoms, the more likely that the biofilm will actually be present because it has more time to actually develop. And mistake number three is not being patient enough. This takes a long time. I had somebody ask me recently, oh, when I start the protocol, how quickly will I be feeling better? And my answer was not quickly at all. Treating SIBO, unfortunately, it's nothing like having a sinus infection where you take a course of antibiotics and then it's gone after a week or so. Uh, it's just way more in depth and resolving it properly is gonna take way more time. And even if you did take a course of antibiotics and eliminate the overgrowth, chances are you probably didn't address the root cause, so you're highly likely to have a recurrence of the SIBO. Mistake number four is not embracing the die-off symptoms or Herx reaction. When you do SIBO treatment, you're taking antimicrobials, which are going to kill the bacteria and thus give the die-off symptoms, such as headache, nausea, more bloating, irritability, muscle aches. We actually want this to happen because it's a sign that the treatment's actually working. If we stop when we see these symptoms and just discontinue everything, we're stopping all the progress we did, even though this is a clear sign that we're actually getting somewhere. So if you're having horrendous symptoms, talk to your functional medicine practitioner, and then there's no harm in adjusting the dose slightly down. We wanna have high enough dose of antimicrobials while we're doing this, so we are killing bacteria, but we don't want to have too much where we're kind of pummeling ourselves with symptoms and then we're miserable for weeks or months or whatever time length it is. Mistake number five is treating SIBO when you don't actually have SIBO. SIBO can cause a variety of GI symptoms, but so can plenty of other things such as food sensitivities, eating a processed food, poor diet, and even conditions such as celiacs. So if you've been trying to treat yourself for SIBO and haven't had success so far, I'd probably recommend doing one of two things. First option is doing a diagnostic functional SIBO breath test. And second, talk to a functional medicine practitioner and they can look at all of your health information collectively and try to decide if SIBO is something that you have going on. In treating any condition, it's hard enough as it is. If we're treating something that's not actually there or treating the wrong thing, it just makes it 10 times harder. Thanks again for watching my video. Again, these are five common mistakes I see with people treating themselves for SIBO. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, if you'd like the video, please leave me a like or subscribe. And if you haven't already, go to my website at drdanielricciardi.com and there's a button to get a free bloating and gas guide. Uh, link to my website is also in the description here. Thank you very much. Have a good day.